The Fermi energy is located in the band gap, somewhere between the valence and conduction bands. We're going to try to locate it. Now, this is what's going on inside of an intrinsic semiconductor. That is a semiconductor that has no dopants. You have electrons that are in the valence band, but they're not free to move, but they get thermally excited up to the conduction band where they are free to move. An electron goes to the conduction band, leaving behind a hole in the valence band. So for every electron in the conduction band, there's one hole in the valence band. So the concentration of electrons in the conduction band equals the concentration, the carrier concentration of holes in the valence band. They're exactly equal. Uh, they don't have the same mobility, so you can still have net current, but it's an electrically neutral situation. In fact, a semiconductor is always to be considered electrically neutral. For every electron in the conduction band, there's a hole in the valence band, or possibly there's an ionized donor in the gap. So let's look at a consequence of N equals P. That's uh, the carrier concentrations are the same. And so we'll equate those expressions we derived last time for N, the NP, the carrier concentrations. And we'll do a little arithmetic, a little algebra on them. There's going to be some logarithms and ratios. Let's bring the N sub V over to the left side. Let's bring the exponentials all over to the right side. Take the log of both sides. So make sure you follow the algebra between these two steps. And I'll do a little bit uh, more manipulation. I would like to get the Fermi over to the left side. So I bring E Fermi over. You see there are two of them here. So I bring them over, but there are two of them. So there's this one half that gets divided through. So make sure you follow this step. Now, finally, I would like to look at how far the Fermi energy is from the valence band edge, because that's going to be an important thing to know about in a semiconductor. You will subtract E sub V from both sides. So E Fermi minus E sub V and so when I do that, I get a negative E sub V over 2 on the right side. So anyway, you're left with this expression. Make sure you follow the algebra from here to here. I just subtracted E sub V from both sides. And so we have an expression for how far the Fermi energy is from the valence energy. As a function of E conduction minus E valence, which, by the way, is the band gap, uh, minus kt over 2 log of this nc over nv, which are known intrinsic densities of states that we can look up. Typical band gap is one or two electron volts, so I'm going to look at an order of magnitude here. So this first term here is on the order of one electron volt. This next term, kT, is 0.026, and then you go and divide it by two, uh, so 0.013. Uh, so 0.013 times log of, well, let's get some numbers here. If you look at the values of n sub c and n sub v in table 1-4 of your textbook, you realize that log of the ratio of NC over NV will be between minus 3 and plus 1 because the actual ratio is varying by about 0.05 to 2. So this second term here is very, very small. That's my point. This second term here is very, very small. It's on the order of 0.02 or less. So it's essentially the gap. If, we, if I went ahead and said whatever the gap over 2 is here, E Fermi minus E valence is essentially whatever this term is, energy gap over two, and which is on the order of one electron volt. So that's our conclusion that the Fermi energy is approximately half the distance between the valence and the conduction bands. So it's the average between them. And so I draw it like that. It's very, very close. It's not exactly half. But it's, it's very close. And you would never give an actual value. We, we just would never tend, tend to never do this. We like to talk about differences in semiconductors. So instead of talking about the absolute Fermi energy, which you will never see, you talk about the difference between energies. So the difference between the Fermi energy and the valence energy, for example, this expression. That's something we deal with. We usually don't deal with absolute energies. For silicon, the energy gap, that's a difference between two levels is 1.12 electron volts. Where is the Fermi energy located? So once again, we're not going to compute the Fermi energy in EVs. We're going to compute how far away it is from a band edge. So we'll take this expression, E Fermi minus E valence equals half the energy gap minus KT over 2, or 0.013, natural log of, and for silicon, 
mc over nv is 2.8 times 10 to the 19th divided by 1.84 times 10 to the 19th per cubic centimeter. Plug in those things in, you get 0.56 for half the energy gap. And um, yeah, 1.12 divided by 2. And you get 0. 0.00545 EV for this whole term. So go ahead and do some insignificant figure math here. And you get 0. 0.5546 EV, uh, which is, by the way, 49.5% of the way through the gap. So pretty much the middle of the gap. All right, so the, the Fermi energy in silicon is on the center of the gap, uh, off by about half a percent. Of the, of the gap. All right, now let's try and make an electric field on. What does that do? So let me remind you the parallel plate situation where you have a bunch of parallel, a bunch of positive charge on one side and a bunch of negative charge on the other side. And if you have an electron in between, if you let go of the electron, for sure it heads towards the positive side. Electric fields, on the other hand, point from positive to negative. The electron wants to go to, to the left plate. So I would say that the left plate is where the potential energy is lower because stuff always wants to go to where the potential energy is lowest. But it's positive, so it's the highest potential. Yes, the electron has lowest potential energy where the potential is highest. That is, that is true. And on the other right plate, that's where the potential energy is the highest because you put an electron over there, it wants to get away from it. But that's also where the potential is the lowest because it's negative. Keep that idea in your head for the rest of the semester because it will keep coming up. Now, if I apply an electric field to a semiconductor, which has these energy uh, uh, conduction band edge and valence band edge and Fermi energies, when I apply an electric field, the electron that's in the conduction band wants to go to the left. So that's where the energy is the lowest. So I will draw the conduction energy not as a horizontal line, but the conduction band edge as a slanted line because that's where an electron wants to go. It has to go down if an electron wants to go someplace. Think of this. All of these energies that you draw in energy band diagrams are actually the potential energy experienced by an electron. So an electron uh, finds lower potential energy to the left, so the conduction band edge has to slant downward to the left. And everything's got to follow it. Uh, electric fields do not have the ability to change the energy gap. They themselves don't move the Fermi energy. There's something else that does, but not the field itself. So the whole collection of three energy edges has to, has to slant. So that's what happens when you apply an electric field to a semiconductor, you know, across the semiconductor, those edges slant. And the semiconductor will leave equilibrium when this happens. You know, Fermi energy is normally it's the same throughout the system. You know, if I take, I showed you before uh, a PN junction where, where we had the, the uh, conduction and the edge and the valence edges were changing at the junction, but the Fermi energy stayed horizontal level throughout. That's normally going to be the case unless you break equilibrium. And equilibrium is disrupted by several things, the electric current, which certainly would result from applying that electric field. Um, so with, you know, without current, yeah, you have the Fermi energy just stays horizontal. But as soon as you start, uh, start letting current flow through, which would be the case here, if you're going to have the electric field across something that's conductive, you're going to have current going through there. A temperature gradient across the, the semiconductor disrupts equilibrium. If I hit the semiconductor with a bunch of light and um, and knock a bunch of uh, electrons up to the conduction band, uh, it will leave equilibrium. So a lot of things will disrupt equilibrium, but we will very frequently talk about whether a semiconductor is in or out of equilibrium and just think that means that there's current going through it and the energy band edges along with the Fermi energy are not horizontal, especially the Fermi energy is not horizontal. So just keep that in mind as sort of a definition of not in equilibrium. Okay, um, so uh, we'll come back later and next, next time and start talking about doping.